all the air pipes in. That's going to be in the bushes under the porch right there. Goes over there. We'll have the check files in tomorrow. Got the electrical pipes run. The other air pipes over there. See that there? Looks like a pipeline, but it comes out over in the corner of the house where you can't see it. So he's buffing all the welds, and uh, we're going to get ready to tar it, hot tar it, and then spray foam on top of the hot tar. And then we're going to wrap it in plastic, and uh, then they're going to put dirt on it. This one is not going to be a concrete covered, so it's got uh, sandblasted hot tar, uh, the tar, then it's got foam, then it's got a sealant on the foam, and it's going to have plastic. It's actually going to have more foam on top of the foam and then plastic. All righty. I got him put an additional weld on the roof using 7018 rod. It's a very high strength rod. But um, all the fittings done, all the air pipes are in. He's almost on his last weld, probably another 30 minutes of welding and we're done with this one. So this is a little piece of wood we're going to use for spacing for the hardy board to compensate for the thickness of the wells. It's only a quarter inch thick. Okay, so first thing, he's going to go ahead and put some liquid nails. What brand do you have there? Uh, this is Loctite Neil Max. Okay, we use the Loctite, but that's the liquid nails? Yes. Alright, so he's got the liquid nails on there. Uh, half, half, half inch, uh, inch from the end. There you go. That's fine. And that's hot because it just got welded. But this is a very thin, like a quarter inch cord. And I can already feel it gripping, you know it? Yeah. Yeah, that's tight. Wow. And the fact that it's hot, it's probably already hard. Cooked it. All right. So go ahead and do the other side. You see, now that's about the thickness of the weld. So when the, the hardy board rolls over, we can leave the weld there. We don't have to clean it up. So I can tell he's put the first layer of hardy board in there. All right, this is going to cover all the welding that took place inside the bunker. Uh, he's also put a couple boards down the middle to raise the level so when they put in a piece of marble or tile down here, <coughs> it doesn't cover the weld. It's down the middle. But this will make this little doorway look as finished as it does on these doors here. See how it's all trimmed? It's hardy board. And if you don't know, guys, hardy board is actually concrete. So this bunker actually has no wood in it with the exception of the wood in the doors and the wood in the counters. That's the only wood in this entire shelter. Well, I guess that right there too. But everything else is just, you know, it's this hardy board and it's composite ducking and this stuff will last for pretty much ever. All right, so this is a rubber coat. We're gonna rubber coat it. That's the roofing tar. and we're using liquid nails to seal it. the other side now you can see there's that piece of plywood in there that will compensate for the thickness of the weld so you've got to put it's got it down here as well so there's two pieces of quarter inch plywood to compensate for the thickness of the weld so when we're done here with this there'll be a piece of uh, granite marble or whatever goes down there our stops for all these sliding doors that we put in here 
So he's putting the stop on right now. It just slides on the end and it has an Allen wrench that tightens it down. I'll tell you what one looks like that's already been put on. That right there. So when the door slides over, here it comes. It actually hits that and stops so the door doesn't come off the track. All right, so this is the hardy board trim. This is it's solid cement. Lift it up, hey Finn. There you go. If everybody wants me to do this, I'm gonna do it before they paint it and the paint's sticky, but I'm gonna go through the escape tunnel because this is the first place kids like to go when they come in these bunkers. So, you just climb up this ladder here, get a ladder, just climb up the ladder, and you climb out of it. So I'm holding the camera, it's kind of hard. But this is the hatch, and this room will be full of sand, so when they're done, there'll be a pile of sand right there. But this is the emergency escape. All you gotta do is turn these things, open it up, and there's a ladder right up there. And going back out into the bunker, I can almost walk in here. I'm tall. All right, now he's putting a string of caulk on the hardy board. It's really clean. Nice job. So in here, to make it weather tight, we welded it, but we went ahead and put a, a tar up there. It's a roofing tar and down the sides as well. Um, and of course there, over there as well, where we welded everything. So it's got a, roof, a tar on that, as well as the pipe this corner right here that we did on a, we did it with an elbow, 45 degree elbow, completely tarred. All the wells are tarred, everything's tarred. Now we're gonna get ready to spray some foam in a little bit. All right, so what he's doing now, he's screwing on our check valve with a screen on it. This is so when the air comes in the main pipe and the condensation is built up, it has a place to let out the condensation in the check valve means water can come out, but water can't come up inside it. So that will be on the end of every pipe, and that will keep the condensation out of the stair pipe. So now we're tarring between the bunkers. All right, so he's mixing a two-part epoxy is what we use for the walls. Now this stuff only has about an hour and a half life before it hardens up when you can't use it, so don't mix up more than you need for that day. But we're gonna um, try to get two coats on the hardy board and then a single coat on everything else and get it one coat by rolling it. So now you put some xylene in there and you see it's getting kind of thin now. So it'll last fast, otherwise too pasty. All right, so we're starting to do the touch up paint. It takes two coats of this epoxy. We're gonna roll it on with a foam. You wanna use the foam instead of that little hairy brush. Otherwise it leaves, uh, it leaves like, a, like a texture. Looks good. getting ready to spray foam around everything where we welded on this. So we put spray foam around the top there, all down the sides. Looks good. Now we're doing this area here, everywhere we did a connection. We also hot tarred it. So it's got a hot tar. Now we're putting foam for insulation.
filled all that. I wonder if it's hard yet. Ugh. Yeah, it is hard. That was spraying good right there. That's how it's supposed to look. That's dedication right there, guys. This is the air intake pipe is why we're putting so much effort on getting the foam around it because we don't want cold air in the bunker in the winter. Um, so we're insulating the pipe. All right, this is going to be my last video of the outside. Now, it's day six of the installation. We've done all the part the contractor wants us to do, and he's going to take it from here. He's going to finish hooking up his plumbing, electrical, and put in his cameras and comms and do the dirt work and all that stuff and any additions that they're doing to the house. But let me show you what I did. So this is a double bunker. It's from the Platinum Series. It's a 12 by 50, and it's a 10 by 50 connected. So it's got three bedrooms two full bathrooms it's got a living room a kitchen a dining room and a game room all in that one bunker it's amazing you're going to see the inside in a second but let me explain the outside so the air is going to come in over there and there's going to be bushes around it near the deck air comes in there it travels through the pipe pipe slopes down a little bit to compensate for condensation the pipe's been insulated as well as the bunker if any condensation builds up from hot air hitting cold air or cold air hitting warmer air condensation will go through a check valve that's going to be right there okay so on the other side when the air is done it goes to the other pipe and if you guys ever wonder if people can like just pour gas in or anything or blow smoke down there the answer is they could blow they could pour in gas but it would just go down the pipe and run through the check valve into the rock garden that's going to be there and if they tried to uh pump in smoke the overpressure blast valve closes off so you can't actually pump carbon monoxide in there as a lot of you guys think because the pressure the valve stays closed okay uh, and then when it opens it's because the overpressure from the inside is open the overpressure blast valve to let air out with the co with the carbon dioxide so this is the bunker okay now i'll explain these air pipes there's two nbc air systems in this bunker the air comes in over there but these are six inch air pipes but the pipe on the end is larger it's eight inch because you got to have enough volume of air to supply two six inch. You can't maintain a six inch pipe to two six inch fittings. So you got to figure the amount of volume of air and then you compensate by making the pipe larger. But uh, this is it. And it's going to have, it's going to have about five and a half to six foot of earth cover. They're going to raise that side up. Now that's the escape tunnel over there. Okay. Uh, in case they got to get out, they got a clandestine escape. Basically they, the way it works is, the escape tunnel is filled full of sand and from the inside you climb up inside there you let the sand out and uh then you climb out and the ground will kind of cave in on you they're going to put a mulch on top of it but you can tell it's about a foot below the grade there all right so they would actually climb out of it at that point all right but uh that's the outside of this bunker and uh we're in chilly but beautiful Minnesota it's real pretty here but let's take a look on the inside and I think you guys are going to be impressed it doesn't feel like a bunker it feels like basically a brand new house you don't see wells you don't really see any steel it just looks like a like the same way somebody would build a house but I use special materials to make sure it would never mold or rot but as you can tell right there 
we're connected to a basement. So you come down the basement, you go through a hallway and you're in the bunker. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, guys, I'm gonna give you the final walkthrough. Now this is a room that's gonna have a vault door and a fake bookshelf in here. So you walk in here and you were guess you would never know it's in here. So this is the entrance. So we tied into the basement by embedding some angle irons in the walls. And then we took the mud room and we tied it in. Of course, we had a contractor do this extension right here. All right, all this concrete. So the mud room is tied in. The staircase is four feet wide, has a handle on both sides, and these are a non-skid diamond tread plate, so there's nothing that's gonna peel off ever. So you go down the stairs, okay? This is the porthole, so you can always peek out from inside or you can pressurize this room. Just lift the door handle, okay? So you got the second room here. This is actually the decontamination room and mud room. Open this door. So we're gonna step into the bunker. Now, like I said, this is a three bedroom, two bathroom, kitchen, living room, dining room, and game room. So the power, the off-grid power is not hooked up yet. So we're just lighting it up with our work lights. So you have a full kitchen here with uh, granite counters, nice handles on the, on the uh, cabinets. Got a built-in microwave up top. This is the living room. They'll have the couch in here, the entertainment center, and this is about a 22 foot living room, so it's pretty good size. Get back here. I don't know if it shows up on camera, as big as it is. That's the crossover to the other bunker. But back here is the guest master, and this has the air system in here. And this room is 12 feet by 11 feet. Has LED overhead lights, eight foot ceilings. It's got under the floor storage. So if you lift this up right here, you have two feet under the floor so there's all your storage down there just let it come down and these are actually composite floors so they'll last forever they can't mold or rot there's this va 150 air system so leaving the guest master heading over to the main master and you have a full bathroom here before you get to the master flushing toilet Vanity, hot water, cold water, walk-in shower, sliding doors. So all the rooms close off like this. They all got the sliding doors, which is very in style right now. And then this is gonna be the master bedroom, which will take a king size bed and all the furniture they want. This one measures 12 feet by 12 feet. So it's a very spacious room, very big. Um, from the inside looking back out, you can see we have all these barn doors. That's how you'll close your rooms. Again, LED lights, full bathroom. Living room. Kitchen, 1100 square feet total here. So we're gonna go into the second bunker. Now y'all remember what this looked like before? We welded between the two bunkers. Now look what it looks like. We did the hardy board on this. It's trimmed out just like a house. See how beautiful that is? Otherwise, you see a bunch of glob welding or angle irons. Not on the Platinum Series, everything's the best. It's made to feel like a house inside. So in the second bunker, this is the dining room. They've got a 13 by 10 foot dining room. They'll have their dinner table and probably some desk in here. You turn to the right, you got your second full bathroom. Flushing toilet, walk-in shower, same vanity, room in the corner to add some shelves. So this is the full bathroom, nice LED light overhead. Of course, the composite floors. And then this is the game room. This is a 20-foot game room. So you can use it for gun storage, gun shelves, gun safes, video games, anything he wants. He's got a 20-foot game room with storage all the way through the floor. You can also use it for storage. And the echo will go away once they put in the furniture, but all the floor panels lift up. So there's one, two, three, four. That's the overpressure blast valve. They're gonna run comms through here. So they'll have right here, they're gonna have uh, cables run for radios, cameras, and all that stuff. All right, so going back into the other room here now, 
like a damn house, isn't it? So we're leaving the guest bathroom. Again, this is the dining room, sliding doors. This also has the second NBC air filtration system. And this is gonna be the kids bedroom with the air system. It's a 13 by 10 room, 130 square foot. There's the air system that is electric. It also has a manual crank. If you lose power, you can easily operate it with this handle right here. And of course, this is the escape tunnel. Everybody loves an escape tunnel. You would crawl in there, go up to the top, open it up, and you could escape without anybody knowing about it. Again, the composite floors. Beautiful walls. Look at these walls, aren't they pretty? All the walls are pretty in these bunkers because we're using the hardy board. Now these walls are made out of hardy board, which is concrete. So it can't mold or rot. The floor is a composite. The kitchen counter is granite. The only wood in this bunker are these doors and the cabinets under the kitchen. That's it. So, and again, the beautiful Passover from one bunker to the other. Look how pretty that turned out. Y'all remember what it looked like right here. Let me flash it for you. Yep, from that to this. And that's what you call taking a lot of pride in your work and making it turn out pretty. So we're leaving the second bunker into the first bunker. Again, the kitchen, granite counters, cabinets. It's gonna be a big living room. They can get a full-size couch, a love seat, big entertainment center over there. When you want to leave, you go through the submarine doors, through the mud room, and through the second submarine door, up the stairs, and they'll have, of course, a Fort Knox gun vault door right there when they're done with this. And then back into the house, through the basement. That's it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the Platinum Shelter from Atlas Survival Shelters. I'll see you on the next video. Atlas Patriots. Thanks for watching today's video. You know, we live in unprecedented times. Ron asks, if you would like to support yourself and this channel, then go to shelterwithatlas.com and take a look at all the specials on survival food and supplies that Ron has arranged to help all his loyal subscribers. As Ron always says, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Remember, this company and all other Atlas approved products are located on the sponsor's page at the Atlas Survival Shelter website.